Today in the crypto space, we see the market finally taking a small dip. Bitcoin down approximately 4.5% and Ethereum down approximately 4.5%. The rest of the crypto space, the altcoins are pretty much following Bitcoin's lead. However, guys, there are some good gainers. Look at Doge, AVAX, and of course, Caspa. And the dips for today, Matic, Chainlink, and a few others. In today's video, I want to talk about the general market. I want to use Bitcoin as a leading indicator. But more importantly, I want to talk about one altcoin, one small altcoin that could do very well. And that project is called Okta, Okta Space. So you know what? Let's talk about the news. Let's analyze the charts and let's strategize to capitalize. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and let's get right into it. Guys, if you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome on the channel. We talk about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all the altcoins looking for opportunities, whether we go up or down, bearish or bullish, it doesn't matter. All we want to do is stay one step ahead of the market so that we can capitalize on any of the volatility. And if you appreciate the strategy, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos, including the live streams at 7.30 Eastern, where we talk about crypto news and and price action guys if you have any projects you want me to cover here on the channel feel free to let me know in the comment section below you can hit me up on those socials the links are in the description but better yet join the discord guys the discord is a great community lots of good alpha trade setups fundamentals and learning material all right guys let's get big let's get going here what's going on here with this market bitcoin at the end of the day has been holding up very nicely going sideways guys this is something that we've been looking at we've been wanting especially for those of us that are heavy into the alt and you know here on the channel we've been covering alts for the last little while you know looking at potential possibilities that we could get an altcoin season and finally we're seeing you know that bitcoin going sideways is giving that room for the alts to continue running now the question is is this over you know is the altcoin season done you know we have seen a lot of the altcoins run up already especially the, some of those those lower cap altcoins that we've been talking about here on the channel for the last little while they've been doing very well a lot of them has been have been doing render caspa octa uh, space finally moving and and it did very very well and a few others of course nakamoto games and the list goes on however guys wh when is the party going to be over at the end of the day we have to wait for bitcoin to give us that signal and also ethereum ethereum is still going sideways still very range bound but you can see that those big picture bearish divergences are are kind of taking effect here and over time they should be given a bit of validity in the sense that be careful here guys we see bitcoin rolling over we see ethereum looking a little weak and in fact right now in my book i think ethereum right now is pretty much underperforming um i don't ex I, I didn't expect ethereum to kind of lag this way especially if this was going to be an altcoin season by now we should have seen ethereum kind of wake up now it doesn't mean that it can't if i you know better late than never of course however guys we have to keep an eye on both bitcoin and ethereum bitcoin already did its job it's up over 100 percent from its bottom we were waiting for ethereum to kind of make do a very similar thing you know you know climb up to those horror levels show us that the market is still awake and especially the altcoins but if ethereum continues looking the way it is and maybe get some a bit of rejection here it could be that we see that the altcoins follow suit and start rolling over all right guys let's continue what else do we have bnb going sideways we have solana you know still looking good higher highs higher lows still within trend no real structure to kind of look at at the moment because uh, as we are doing we are still respecting that trend to the upside although we do have a six percent dip nothing in comparison to the gains that solana has been giving us in the last little while so you can be a bit patient here six percent you know volatility here and there is not a bad thing especially if you were able to scale in you know a, a lot earlier so right now solana is a great doing a great thing pulling back giving us a bit of support perhaps showing us that maybe we'll get that another leg up as soon as we see a bit of structure on solana uh, then we can start seeing look is this a bearish structure what is the invalidation of the structure do we start breaking where do we break the structure to kind of give us the validation of our maybe bearish thesis here so far the bullish sentiment is still there nothing has changed so what i would be doing is looking for ways to protect your gains and that should be in everybody's mindset if you're deep in the green right now you should be basically in the forefront of your mind should be about defense defend your gain defend those profits because at the end of the day the market's going to want to take them back and you should be trailing up those stop losses if you got in nice and early i think the, uh, the best place to think about it is nice lows previous lows of good support like right around the zone you can see this little dip 
put a stop loss right there if we start breaking you know um uh, this low we start changing the character of this overall trend and we start seeing a break uh, you know a structural change for me the change of character is not a good sign it is a bearish sign making a low lower than this low is a very very bearish sign so in this case be careful here for solana we're still good overall maybe we're getting bearish divergence and of course tonight guys i'll be live at 7 30 eastern if you have any projects you want me to cover that is the greatest time and place to make those requests and i feel like we need to take a look at solana so i'm going to put solana right now on the list and i'll put the ones that you guys request at the top of the list in top priority all right guys let's continue uh we spent some time there on solana but you can see why right solana did very well we want to be defensive we want to protect ourselves polygon matic not looking good i'll be honest it looks like it's a complex type of pivot right not a, a double double head with two shoulders nonetheless it looks like it's rolling over with a nice rounded top i don't like that because we have some bottoms there that if we break below in the short term i'm expecting a continuation to the downside if we don't get support any any second now matic is another one that i wouldn't mind looking at i'm going to put that one on the list um because it does look pretty pretty scary there avax is still looking strong it finally woke up it's up 73 percent guys no joke avax moved finally we've been talking we talked about avax um i was like a broken record talking about avax at the bottom of the range that's when you need to understand to take risk now it's a bit risky it's up 73 percent from its bottom or for for the last seven days guys this is where you know things get a little dangerous right you're asking for a, a becoming exit liquidity so avax right now no fresh lungs for me i'm good chain link yeah, it did very well. It looks like it wants to roll over. It, it's getting its pullback. You know, if you got in early, um, yeah, it, it's up to you if you want to basically start taking profits. Me, personally speaking, I'm going to hold my way through Chainlink. I think Chainlink's a good hold. We worked really hard for that entry at, the, at that bottom, at that sideways consolidation for 300, 400, 500 days. Right now, it's not about, I'm not about ready to give up that position. So I'm going to hold on tight. I'll buy dips if I need to be uh, buying them to dollar cost average. But right now, we're pretty good with that. Um, overall, we can see a few tops that are getting be rejected right now. Could we finally be getting the follow through of that bearish divergence that is across the entire market? Caspar defying gravity once again. You know, just continuing, guys. I have nothing else to say about Caspar caspa i've been taking profits off of caspa do i take more i don't know uh, right now i'm like you know what my position size is overall in a place where i'm very comfortable with my position size i'm i'm happy if it dips and i'm happy if it runs and that's a good state because that means there's no emotion i don't care if it runs and i don't care if it dips regardless i took a lot of profit if it comes down i'll buy the dip if it keeps on going no big deal i'll have exposure a decent amount of it that i'm going to be in the gains. so either way i'm happy and that's when you know you have done things right is when your emotions are intact because if you got in too heavy and your position size is too large that's when you start losing sleep you're worried i'm not worried i really don't care caspa go up caspa come down either way i'm happy all right let's continue uh file coin uh rolling over a little bit here we got hadera hash graph getting a bit of a rejection at the previous high not the greatest symbol right there when you see kind of rejection here icp another rejection down seven percent we got some dips throughout this market i've seen that the in fact we're getting dips a lot sooner more frequent that's another indication to me that you know maybe the bulls are ready uh, to get take a break maybe they're getting a bit of exhaustion uh v chain kind of did nothing honestly i, I expected v chain to kind of wake up a little bit but this is another one that when it moves it moves okay this is another one that if it moves it will definitely move so think about this v chain uh could be a very similar to a thor chain play when it does move it does move v chain at the end of the day has been working very hard throughout the bear market and i'm expecting v chain to make a solid solid appearance in this bull run okay so uh keep an eye on v chain quant you know falling little bit still around that 100 level the more and more i see quant struggle at this at this level to be honest while all these altcoins are running leads me to believe that quant is done i'm not really interested anymore honestly there's no momentum there's no hype there's some people still talking about it randomly on socials but you know at the end of the day put the money where your mouth is there's nobody buying quant at this moment you can see this there's no bids this thing's falling it's barely barely holding out i hate to talk bearish about a project but when you look at price action like this it's dead in the water in my opinion the, it, the, the project could be very good could be uh, very active but the price action is dead in the water why are you here to trade to see volatility in the price the the the, the fundamentals are great no doubt hold a position but don't expect to have volatility so that you can trade on it we haven't been seeing quant do anything for a very long time so let's move on 
uh, immutable x looks like it's making a nice beautiful rounded top it could get a bit of a bart simpson to the downside it's currently down approximately eight percent as you can see the the market's starting to wake up in a bearish way so i'm not really i'm not really getting into fresh longs right now render looking great 15 percent to the upside that's great that's another project that you know unfortunately i wasn't able to scale my entire position back in in fact after i took profits i never was able to get back in and that's what that's the the risk you take when you take profits but guess what guys i'm profitable that's very important a lot of people can't say that unfortunately and uh, alternatively you can also say you know what i did release my capital to go find other opportunities that also ran like the ones that i've been talking about octospace totally did well in the last little while uh I, put, I increased my position on caspa when i took render uh render profits during the summer and that's the thing it's about recycling finding better opportunities that haven't yet run because render at the end of the day it is up 15 percent, but nothing in comparison comparison to some other altcoins that you know have didn't pop yet they might run up 20 30 percent in a couple of hours even a couple you know and then all of a sudden um you know render at the end of the day is still at 15 percent still great gains guys i'm not gonna knock it good stuff here for render but ultimately taking profits that's the that's the that's the the game you play take profits find something else that should outperform render render has been going quiet for i would say about a week at least a minimum a week which means during that week you could have put your capital to work and now all of a sudden we see render waking up so that's pretty good 15 percent to the upside for render uh congrats if you got on that one phantom still looking pretty good 42 percent to the upside for phantom not bad of a move to the upside and as you continue going down this market we have a few more good dips right there's a few dips there's a few gainers here and there but generally speaking here guys you gotta admit there's more dips than there are gainers and these dips although some of them are a bit shallow i would say five percent five to ten percent dip throughout the market is definitely there while we have some random anomalies still running to the upside right so guys pretty good not too bad um guys i know you're here to talk about charts let's begin talking about bitcoin let's see what's going on here with bitcoin bitcoin at the end of the day got a fat rejection in the last hour guys it got a rejection it was hanging out up here at about 38k doing pretty good looking for a breakout and we got a railroad track retracement now if we get into larger time frames it looks a little different if you look at big picture it looks a little bit different if you look at momentum it looks pretty bad let's look at this in a little bit more detail okay guys you know that i'm a momentum trader right i focus heavily on momentum in the last little while it would have been against my strategy just to focus on momentum but that's the reality you got to pivot really quick as soon as i saw overbought conditions i saw the weekly trying to get overbought you know for me it was like okay now i gotta kind of take it easy here because on the lower time frames um it, it could stay overbought for a bit longer especially when the weekly gets into overbought conditions so let's start by looking at the weekly for a second it's overbought you saw it got, it got overbought and now it's like okay how long is it going to stay here i don't expect it to stay much hot longer or as long as it, it does in uh in the short in the lo lower time frames basically the one hour the four hour the daily it hung out there for a long time now we peaked in could it be sustainable could could we continue to the upside all very very possible but the probability statistically speaking here for bitcoin is that it's going to take a bit of a break given the fact that this thing ran up already very aggressively with a lot of conviction a lot of strength and we're very close to that 40k level so the risk reward reward ratio for any fresh longs on bitcoin is quite quite scary we can get rejected at 40k or maybe it is the fact that people are front running the 40k level psychological level number one number two a very confluent level with that a lot of people are talking about um you know as a bullish price target so what about if this is the top we got a nice tweezer top happening here on the weekly tweezer top patterns are bearish of course it, we still have a lot more time to finish this week we got a few days left so let's see what happened three days four hours give or take so th this is the reality but nonetheless this is the tweezer top that we are currently see overbought conditions the macd is still looking good ema is facing up green histogram bars to the upside all we know as of now it could continue to the upside so let's just keep it in mind okay but the extension away from the previous low is quite aggressive so are you going to get into a fresh one right now for me it's a bit iffy let's take a look at the the, the daily the daily this is where you know things start to look a little bit hectic because the daily showing us that bearish divergence the, this divergence was talked about so early prior to anybody actually even talking about it on socials um and i was monitoring obviously monitoring socials trying to make sure that we were trying to stay one step ahead and guys we did it 
this thing was giving us the signal that it could be very possible that Bitcoin kind of stays sideways here as we fulfill this bearish divergence. And when Bitcoin goes sideways after a fat run to the upside, we know that altcoins might go for a run. And that's exactly what happened to alts. Alt, altcoins started running all throughout this period, all throughout this zone where Bitcoin was going sideways. Now, all of a sudden, we are seeing that the momentum is giving us a signal. Momentum is breaking a bit of a trend. One, two, and this didn't, this touched, but it broke right through. We need a quick, quick reaction to the upside if we're gonna close this little line above the diagonal support as of now we're breaking trend if we start breaking trend we start rolling over we get a bit of a pop to the upside and continuation if we get another pop it may be the best opportunity to start taking more profits especially off your altcoins because if bitcoin rolls over and comes down to lower levels it is likely that altcoins do fall especially the ones that have aggressively ran up with very to, uh, little support below it. Think about, for example, Tau. Tau is bullish. Tau is amazing. I loved its tech. Uh, you know how bullish I am. But the reality is there's not, no price action below to act as support, and that is dangerous because the retracements will be deep. So you want slow and steady price action with consolidations along the way. Bitcoin right now rolling over is going to create a lot, of, a lot of fear, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And the first assets to sell off are risk on assets. So you're looking at the micro caps, the low caps, and even all the rest of the altcoins tend to sell off when Bitcoin shows weakness because people are fearful, right? So this is the issue. Right now, Bitcoin is getting a bit of a follow through with regards to this bearish divergence. Let me show you what I mean. Higher highs on the price action, lower highs on the RSI. So for me right now on the daily, it doesn't look good to be totally bullish. In fact, I would be very, very hesitant getting into any fresh longs even on altcoins but if you find a good level of support on an altcoin if you find an altcoin that has yet to run up you can put a very tight stop loss and get into a position you're risking very little if you can put a tight stop loss we'll talk about this more when we look at octa of course today's video is about octa but i feel like we need to talk about bitcoin because bitcoin is gonna definitely inform our strategy for octa and for other altcoins okay guys we'll talk about more about this uh in the live stream tonight feel free to join we can see the macd's rolling over emas are facing down we got the red histogram bars forming not a good thing and then all of a sudden uh if we get into lower time frames you look at the four hour we're getting that follow through where we might get you know back down to oversold conditions it does look like bitcoin wants to kind of go sideways and maybe get oversold here okay so let's kind of see what happens bitcoin's not giving us great signals we're hanging around here we kind of took a dip already let's see what happens in the immediate short term okay so that's my take on bitcoin still going sideways we can come down to about 33 600 and still get a nice little bounce and still hang around this zone for the next little while all right guys let's jump into octa let's see what's going on here with octa space uh, octa space is a great small cap low cap altcoin that i think has a very very hot and interesting value proposition guys go check out my deep dive you guys know that i release deep dives every sunday i'm currently in the works of uh, preparing for a next deep dive but if you want to look at the deep dives that i got going there is a playlist uh playlist is right here playlist you want to check out those playlists of course uh we have a deep dive crypto deep dive playlist you can check out all of the playlist here you can see that i have octa space if you want to know what it's about I have taraxa microvision chain space all of these projects that have been doing pretty good are all here and if you're interested in it go check it out miria's there realio hello all of these guys doing really well so if you want to go check them out they're there let's begin now you can see that the structure here on octa right now is looking good it's good. It's really good. However, guys, the risk to reward ratio is a bit scary. And I'll explain why. It's because you're going to have to rely on diagonals. And I don't like diagonals very much. They don't hold up as well as horizontals. Horizontals, you can track the supply and demand, and you can track the weak spots in the price action a lot better. Diagonals, it's just the trend. I get it. The trend is your friend. But even still, you can get fake outs on trends. You can get you know liquidity grabs on trends. And with diagonals, you get a little bit more clarity as far as where the strength is in the price action and even the weakness of course you know guys i follow uh look for volume gaps for weakness right so that's an important thing now over here you can see uh that ultimately let's see where uh let me see lower time frames for a second where's my volume profile i don't see where my volume profile is here right now let's see if i got it um going uh it is here but it's not populating today i'm not sure why but anyways it's no big deal 
you can see that we got some tops 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 top tops these tops are currently acting as resistance this resistance right now is being tested many times one two three times and of course all of this now the more times we hit it the, the more times we knock on it the likelihood is that we break out but look at these knocks they're quick wicks they're rejections they're not nice strong candles like this one this one was very promising then all of a sudden a nice rejection this volume gap is an important one and i wish i was able to show you my volume profile but for some reason trading views not you know showing it to me maybe tonight we can do a bit of an update to show you what the volume profile looks like uh, maybe if i refresh let's do a quick refresh of this um a reload here for quickly and see if it kind of gives it to me and, and you could see that ultimately you know the trend is still there and then you see you got that trend and we got the volume profile perfect so you, you can see the point of controls right here the weak spot above is what we need to focus on the fact is that once we break above this 57 cent zone there's not a lot of supply and demand to act as resistance however guys we got the previous high and we got this level the reality is that this level right here at about 82 83 cents that is where we start getting into price discovery mode the reason being is that these little wicks don't have much volume and then we can start breaking up and hitting extension levels and for me extension levels that's where you know the real profits come in because you start getting to the 1.27 you start getting into the 1.618 golden pocket extension level all those great levels levels where you're in massive gains and if you looked at some of the projects that have pumped already they're already up here so if you consider the fact that Okta has yet to get up there, the risk to reward ratio is pretty good. Let me show you what I mean. It's not the greatest, but let's be real, but I'll show you what I mean. If we get in absolutely right now and we put a stop loss, let's be you know, down here. And then we start saying, you know what, it's gonna go all the way to the 1.618 extension like Caspa did and all these others. The risk to reward ratio is still not bad. It's almost three to one. Okay, fine. But the likelihood, this is a real moonshot, in, in, in local moonshot, obviously. This is a good move. If you can get this, you're great. You you did really well. It's 127% from where you bought in. The reality is that because you're buying in a little bit high, your, uh, your risk to reward ratio is not the best. The time to get in was down here. This, where these green arrows were, where I was talking about start scaling in, DCA, DCA. So their issue is now, is that you're going to have to sacrifice some of the gains, and you're going to have to sacrifice a bit of security to get in right now and that's a decision you got to make so instead of putting a stop loss all the way down here you have options you could put a stop loss let me see you could put a stop loss right around here at this low because we did get a low here and you can put it right here improving your risk to reward ratio and it doesn't mean that you have to take profits all the way up here right you can take a bit of profit here which is still a three to one ratio you see how things kind of shape up if you start considering the structure st structural supports that you have along the way now look the ultimate support is down here let's be clear about that if we come down come down to lower levels we can make a lower low we can make a lower low and based on this local low let me zoom in a little bit you, you see this low right here at the end of the day we could roll over and still come down to about i would say 37 cents and still make a higher low in comparison to this low but breaking below this low that's the issue is that those fake outs those quick liquidity grabs at lower levels still exist this is why i like healthy risk toward ratios but you can see what's happening here if you look at the structure it looks like a beautiful beautiful structure we got a nice rounded bottom a nice little retracement actually it was pretty deep too deep for my liking but the sentiment is still there we came right back right right back up to test the resistance now if we break this resistance the quick quick move as a breakout because now you have to treat it as a breakout trade is a nice move to appear it's 42 cents just to the previous to the next area of resistance 42 cents obviously this is a nice weak spot we got a bit of a, a spike in supply and demand that we could get a reaction in the short term come back up get rejected come back down back test and then continue to the upside so anticipate maybe a bit of a reactive move right around this level it, it prepare your emotions prepare your position sizes for that to happen just in case right but so far we're trying to break throughout this resistance and it's not happening just yet so the risk you're taking is that number one we get rejected and come back down and we're able to buy at lower levels number two not having a position size is also very very risky not having some exposure is also risky because if it does break out you're not you don't have any skin in the game you won't be able to capitalize on the profit so you got some critical decisions and believe it or not a lot of projects are already in this type of phase where they're moving a little bit haven't really got an impulsive move just yet 
And once they get the impulsive move, it's like almost like you're trying to jump on a moving train. That's when things get scary, guys. So at this point, it's bit by bit, in my opinion, uh, I would be DCAing all into this area from here all the way down to here get in with a small position size if it comes down dca 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 that's the best thing you can do at the current moment if you dca with 10 percent, at least you have some skin in the game and at the end of the day once you get here you can definitely make 40 percent of whatever you get in and you have to be happy with the fact that you're profitable because getting in right now with um, betting the farm is a bit dangerous and as a breakout trader scenario what you really would want to do is this you would want to wait for the break let it break to the upside fine and unfortunately you might want to get in with a 10 percent right here on the break look at that fake out at the end of the day we broke a little bit and came right back in you would have been 10 percent in of course in a bit of a loss think about it okay then all of a sudden you wait for the back test and then all of a sudden you get in a little bit more right around here then as soon as it breaks to the upside great you get a, you're in profit and then you get in upon the break of the previous high confirming a higher high and then off to the races and usually when the market sees these signals that's when you get the big impulsive moves okay so be careful here it does look like it's possible that this happens personally speaking i would prefer getting in at lower levels but the market doesn't uh, guarantee anything it's all about probability guys be careful with all of this right now you got to think about it we've been two weeks of really good good bullish momentum eventually the party's gonna end and you you do not want to be left holding the bag and becoming exit liquidity all right guys thank you for stopping by if i've offered you any value in this video do the channel a huge favor and slap the like button it does really help out with the algorithm join me live tonight at 7 30 eastern where we talk about crypto news and price action if you have any projects you want me to cover that is a great time and place to make those requests i'll put them in top priority and of course the discord guys join that discord it's a great community lots of good alpha trade setups fundamentals with learning material and all that good stuff take care guys have a good one and don't forget buy the dip